performing a fire pump churn test, the pump is first started by dropping the pressure in the sensing line from the fire pump controller. This simulates the activation of a sprinkler head in the building to start the fire pump automatically. With an automatic controller, the controllers will shut down the fire pump after a specified amount of time. For an electric pump, this is 10 minutes. There's a number of things that are observed at the pump while the churn is being performed. The first is just the housing, make sure that the temperatures are staying in line. The pressures are verified on both the suction and the discharge side of the pump to make sure that they're within their design limits. and the pump pressure relief is also verified to ensure that any extra pressure is being bled off as designed. All the data taken during the test is recorded then for entry into the inspection reporting software. Testing a backflow device, the technician first begins by shutting off the discharge side of the backflow prevention device. The technician will then install adapters onto the test ports of the backflow device so that the testing meter can later be attached. Prior to connecting the testing device, the technician will briefly open the water supply at each test cock to make sure that any debris or dirt is blown free. The device that's used to test the backflow prevention device is commonly referred to as a backflow test kit. This kit consists of a pressure differential gauge, several valves, and some tubing that allows it to be connected to the device. The technician connects two of the tubes from the backflow test kit to the backflow. This is going to be used to verify the pressure difference on the supply side and the discharge side of the first check in the backflow preventer. technician opens the test cocks on the backflow device, verifies that all his connections are tight, and then bleeds any air out of the backflow test kit. The valves are then closed and the pressure difference between the front side and the back side of the first check is recorded. The technician then adjusts the hoses and moves them so that they are on the front and the back side of the second check on the backflow device. The same steps are then repeated. Sprinkler tamper switches are designed to notify a fire alarm panel if a valve on a sprinkler alarm system is closed or opened. This is done so that facility managers can know if a sprinkler system has been impaired by having its water supply shut off.
these devices are tested by fully exercising the valve to its full range of motion. Unlike smoke detectors, the heat detectors in your facility are activated when they sense the heat given off by a flame. These devices are tested using a special tool which raises the temperature around the heat detector to simulate the heat given off by a fire. Once these devices go into alarm, they are indicated at the device by a small LED on the base. The technicians then communicate with each other via radio to verify that the alarm signal was received at the fire alarm panel. The smoke detectors in your facility are tested using a device which introduces an aerosol-based smoke into the chamber of the smoke detector. When the smoke detector activates, the small LED on the device will turn on, and the technician will then verify with his partner at the panel that the device reported to the main fire alarm panel. Performing a fire pump flow test, the first thing that's done is readings taken while the pump is in churn. This is actually done prior to flowing any water. Once the churn test is complete, there are three separate test measurements taking. The first is at 50% of the pump's rated capacity, the second is at 100% of the pump's rated capacity, and the third test is at 150% of the pump's rated capacity. This is done by controlling the amount of water flowing through the hose clusters and taking readings back at the fire pump and the fire pump controller. Part of the test of the fire alarm panel in your facility is verifying that the batteries are both at their proper voltage and load level ratings. To perform this test, the technicians begin by disconnecting the terminals from the battery so that they can remove it from the panel. Once the battery is removed from the fire alarm panel, the technician will connect the battery to the load testing device. Once the battery is connected to the device, the technician then sets the device for the voltage and amp hour ratings of the battery. The technician then begins the test by pressing the start button on the device. The battery is then placed under a simulated load. During the test, both the load readings and the voltage readings are continuously monitored. The voltage on the batteries is expected to stay at about 2.05 volts per cell, so during the test the voltage is continuously monitored. Upon completion of the test, the device will give an indication of the percentage of the rating of the battery that is still good. Batteries that are at an 80% rating or higher are generally considered passing. Anything less than that is considered a failing test. When testing the duct detectors, the first thing we do is verify that the airflow in the housing is at an appropriate level. This is done using either an airflow meter or a manometer. This is done to ensure that the device is properly sampling the airstream of the ductwork. Once the airflow is verified, the device is tested using an aerosol smoke solution to verify that the device will activate when smoke enters the chamber. Once the activation is verified, the chamber of the device is then cleared from smoke using compressed air. The purpose of testing the elevator recall functions on a fire alarm system is to ensure that the elevator is going to move to an exit floor of the building in the event that there is an emergency. This is done by testing a smoke head as normal as in the elevator lobby, and then the elevator recall is verified by ensuring that the elevator drops to the exit floor or to an alternate floor on the main exit floor when the device is tested.